ni mchanga inachimbwa tu chini ni kama jivu inapitishwa kwa kichungi kama ile mchanga wa kupiga plasta In the first part of this story Africa and censored investigates and exposes a scheme by corrupt individuals to sell earth scooped from the ground as affordable fertilizer suitable for farming This second part attempts to answer questions about the controversial deal and its impact on farmers We reached out to the individuals and companies involved in the manufacture and sale of GPC fertilizer across the country, and here is a twist to this story. In a letter sent to Africa and censored via email, National Cereals and Produce Board (NCPB) states that its arrangement with 51 Capital is purely a commercial contract and not under the government subsidy program, a position held by Joe Karioke, the man at the center of it all. There's no partnership there. As I'm saying is it's an agency contract. The only thing they give me it's a platform to sell and it's a variety of whatever I want to sell. We are talking about NCPB. You should be talking about we have a you know we still have the same arrangement with KFA. We have the same arrangement with uh agro dealers. It's everybody. So let's not particularly talk about NCPB. Let's talk about in general how I do business. However, the modality around the sale and distribution of this product raises more questions. First, while transporting the alleged fertilizer, a whistleblower Bob says that he met no resistance. Na pengine mkisafirisha barabarani, mko mnasimamishwa na polisi. Tulikuwa tunawaambia tumetumwa na serikali. Hakuna venye wangetusimamisha hata sasa tukua tunalipa kwa sababu tulikuwa tunasema tuko na mzigo wa serikali. Okay. Yeah. Kwa na kitu pengine mko nao ya kuonyesha delivery note ilikuwa inaonyesha NCPB. Bob also discloses that this highly guarded venture paid more than what he makes in his normal earnings in the transport business. Walikuwa well, natulipa vizuri kwa maana kila ukiingia kwa ile kampuni ukienda na urudi ulikuwa unaikiwa mafuta shilingi 1200 you're given 20k and 20k fuel. Kiki wa mzigo ilikuwa ni kama umeekewa kitu ambao ni gold. Every 10 kilometers unauliza imefika wapi? Ilikuwa guarded kabisa. Secondly, the consumers who spoke to Africa and Censored on camera claimed to have been mobilized by state officers to buy the product. Sasa vile hiyo mbolea ilifika kwa cereal bot tukapigiwa na watu wa agriculture ati kuna mbolea kwa cereal tukaenda Sasa ukifika pale hakuna kubeba pesa kwa mkono pesa iko kwa simu ukifika unapewa till bila hata kuingia uangalie ni mbolea gani tukalipa hiyo pesa kwa nilichukua 150 kg ilikuwa 25 25 package and he stressed that that fertilizer is good being that it was organic fertilizer He said that uh, the yields would be better. Sikwa mwanzo waende ujaribu. Ndio mshoto utapenda. Unajua kitu organic unajua haitachoma nini na yako. Hiyo ni kitu unajua kwanza. The information we've so far gathered from our secret filming, Bob's revelations and damning nutrient analysis to those behind this scheme prompt tough questions on the glaring system failures and collusion between government and corrupt individuals. We also question the role of the Kenya Bureau of Standards, the government agency responsible for governing and maintaining quality standards of products sold in the country. Kwa nikiona kebs nafikiria hiyo kitu ni kitu ya muhimu ama kitu ya maana. Naweza jua ni original kumbe haikuwa original. I remember there was a time I saw such a bag in uh, in Kiganjo a uh, serious board but I did not purchase it. Normally I don't purchase fertilizers that I have not used. And if I happen to buy a new fertilizer, I normally take it for analysis to ascertain that the nutrients that are declared in the bag are actually the one that uh, bears or reflects the content that is within the bag. So I did not get to use that fertilizer. 
company is about teams. We reached out to Kenya Bureau of Standards via email to seek clarification over this matter. However, by the time of publication, our queries remained unanswered. Sitting underneath this table are helpless farmers who, with the rising cost of living and commodity prices, relied heavily on this subsidy program to salvage their livelihoods. Uh, the GPC, I sourced it from the store, the store of the of the government, not from uh, individual uh, agrovets. This gospel of organic fertilizer spread to Jane Atino, a resident of Usiemba village in Ogunja sub-county, Siaya County, at the nearby Ambira NCPB depot. The officer that was in charge of uh, distribution of fertilizer encouraged farmers to take that fertilizer and he stressed that that fertilizer is good, being that it was organic fertilizer. He said that uh, the yields would be better. I, I believed that it was uh, organic because I've never seen organic fertilizer that is packed. Uh, because here in the village, the organic fertilizer that I know is normally maybe just being scooped with a, with a spade and applied on the, on the holes. However, Jane says that her belief was short-lived when she got back to her farm with the product ready to plant. Being that it was much dusty, I suspected that this fertilizer, maybe it is not to the standard that a fertilizer should be. When, uh, when I was applying that fertilizer, a lot of it was being swept away by the wind. So I had to really bow <laughs> so as to apply it, not applying when standing. I had to use, a, I had to bend a lot. With little knowledge from her experience with fertilizers, Jane says she noticed other aspects of these products. Unlike the one in our possession, as we would discover later in our investigation, Jane's fertilizer is in the rebranded package which lists a company by the name SBL Innovate as its manufacturer. A delivery note addressed to NCPB Mwingi Depot and captured in our secret filming has an email address and website that implies a connection between SBL Innovate and GPC Farm, a subsidiary of 51 Capital. It's owned by one person. Yeah. You can sell any product, I can start tomorrow any product. I, I told you I'm starting a condom business. So I'll decide whether to use GPC or whatever company I think I can use it for. Yes, this is the fertilizer. In fact, I picked three bags. I picked three bags from the government depot. I applied two bags and uh, three quarters. This is how it looks like. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Most fertilizers are supposed to be soluble. When, you, when it comes into contact with water, they are very soluble, very fast. But this one was not soluble and it was, uh, it was, it was having some particles that are remaining. That means when it goes, that one, when it goes into the soil, then it takes time for it to be able to, to, to dissolve. And that means the release of nutrients within that fertilizer could be very slow. A nutrient analysis conducted on Jane's sample by an accredited laboratory in the country also reveals trace amounts of nitrogen, phosphorus and potassium, the three key elements of a planting fertilizer. According to Jane, the texture and inability of the fertilizer to dissolve in water forced her to take an action she says may have saved her crops. 
to me, I saw that I mixed it with another, I mixed it with the Yara power. So uh, upon mis mixing it, the result I, I found to be good. Yeah, the yields were improved. I was just trying to reinforce, being that after seeing it, I was just seeing most of it was being swept, uh, carried away by the wind. So I just decided to reinforce it with the Yara, Yara power. I, I think that if I had not mixed that fertilizer with the Yara power, the result could have just been the same as the, one, the other farmers. This interview with Jane revealed our whistleblower's worst fears about the GPC fertilizer, that this could be one way of robbing farmers off their hard-earned wages. Walikuwa naambiwa kwamba ndiyo fertilizer ambao itawaletea mazao ya juu zaidi. Mkulima kwa kawaida anaamini kwamba serikali haitawadanganya. Itampea vitu ambavyo vitamvukisha kutoka kwa hali ambayo alikuwa. During my second visit to Jane's village, I can't help but wonder how many farmers have fallen for such lies and what this meant to them financially, considering the time and effort invested in farming. It was also noteworthy that most of those affected seemed to be small-scale farmers. As someone who's been brought up in the village, I understand fully the difficulties farmers go through in obtaining farm inputs such as fertilizer. And one of the most difficult parts of this story has been uh, being able to get farmers to open up about their experiences after using the GPC fertilizer, which they thought is genuine organic fertilizer from the government, but the story is different. And I'm here to listen to them. Okay, now, today we are going to a friend of mine mm -hmm. who is uh, just coming from nearby. Okay. Yes. While Jane's quick thinking saved her from a possible loss of harvest, her friend Judith Okeche's story is different, and she is learning the hard way after purchasing six bags of the same fertilizer. Nilikuwa na pika isabu imeni saidia kwa sababu be be ambola ilikuwa juu. Sasa kwa ukipata kwa twenty five una yazadi pa seventeen hundred, so na wada ni faida. Ndio sababu ilifanya nikimbia uko. However. She claims that due to the texture of the product, she only used it on one section of her land and was forced to buy a different fertilizer for a much higher price. organic Na palipanda na yara benye litoa kwa agrovet, ilikuwa maindi kweli kweli, ama mutama pia ilikuwa mzuri. Lakini palitumea umugani kili nichoma. Judith says she lost three acres of maize to the alleged fertilizer. E, nilita mutu agrikacha, akakuja. Na kaniambia saida ni nini. Kwa sao, iyo shamba nilipima, nikamuaga laini na compost. Sali nilikuwa nafikira itakuwa sawa. Akaniambia hii mbolea ndio ingii naisha hapa kwa kumbe. Eh hivyo ndio aliniambia. Hii mbolea si nzuri naisha hapa lako. Fellow colleagues or farmers they complained of that fertilizer from the word go that it is dusty. It is it is in fact they they nicknamed it that this is chuodo, kumanisha, here it is, it is not taking them anywhere. But those who went ahead and uh, applied it, awakupata, awakuvuna, whatever they harvested was a meager harvest, haikuwa good. Where, whom do you complain to? <laughs> no, they, they, there's, no, there's no one they can complain to. Our efforts to speak to farmers who use the fertilizer in other parts of the country were unsuccessful, as many of them said they feared victimization. In Narok, two commercial farmers said they rejected the product due to its powdery nature, which would hinder its use on row crop tractors, and another in Kipkaren, Wasingishu County, said he rejected it out of mere suspicion. We also spoke to a potato farmer in Maunarok who claimed to have lost two acres of his crop after using the fertilizer 
and two more from Tala, Machakos County, whose similar predicament forced them back to the shops for a more expensive product. Maybe they think they'll be victimized. You know, <laughs> farmers, they, they know that they'll be victimized. Uh. You just know that the, the current government in which we are, if you are victimized, that may become the end of you, the end of your family. So, wanna fear. There is, that is why there is that fear. They are closed and they are, they are being affected. They don't want to open up. Mm. Me, I'm not scared. <laughs> I'm not. Sinaona nini ya kebs, sasa nikiona nini ya kebs, uwa nafikiria yu ni original. Siyezi jua ni fake. Kwa sababu. <laughs> Kila kitu ukishaona kebs, unajua, ah, hiyo kitu ni nzuri. Kumbe, ni poroja ya Kenya. The distribution of GPC, earth scooped, packed and marketed as affordable organic fertilizer and sold at NCPB stores across the country is a reflection of a flawed system that is easy to manipulate for private gain. As such, through tens of thousands of contracts and tenders on the government's public procurement information portal has turned futile, as we could not find any information about the partnership between NCPB, 51 Capital and African Diatomite Industries Limited to supply subsidized fertilizer for a period of two years. Our request to NCPB for its list of pre-qualified vendors remained unanswered. However, there is an open pre-qualification notice for supply of goods and services to the parastatal, including that of different types of fertilizers that runs from 1st January 2022 to 1st July 2024. Could this be the door that allowed the entry of a plot to rip from the fertilizer subsidy program across the Uhuru Kenyatta and William Ruto regimes? What, what uh, drives people into business? you find that certain businesses have attracted more people. It's because of the returns. So fertilizer is a hot cake. And uh, when it comes to planting seasons, everybody is looking for fertilizers. Now it's very easy to sell fertilizer, uh, to steal and sell fertilizer, because the demand is high. To make a fertilizer, there's a lot of input in it, in terms of uh, the materials and the costing. Okay, so when the government talks of a subsidized fertilizer, I believe it is not talking of subsidized quality. The quality should remain the same. Is it possible that Joe Karaoke, a self-proclaimed jack of all trades and African Diatomite Industries Limited, a company dealing in the mining of diatomite, could be capable of solving the fertilizer crisis in Kenya? You kind of chuckled when I told you that this particular fertilizer is being excavated in Kenya. Why is that? Because I, <laughs> because I don't know any, any, any source in Kenya where fertilizer or raw material to manufacture fertilizer get mined. There's never been a forum where farmers can share their views on the fertilizer. Even the government themselves who, who supplied this fertilizer to the farmers, they have never called the farmers to ask them how the fertilizer has performed on the crops. And who in the Kenyatta and Ruto governments are protecting the masterminds of this scheme that has run for almost two years? Nimesema, kama amepatikana Kenya hii, ashikwe, afungwe. Na raisa lisema mambo ni matatu. Ye ya kipatikana ashikwe. Hata sipenda ikwe binguni bila kukufungwa. Afungwe kwanza. Uh, no, I don't want to give you the samples I have. Mm. I want you to go and take. Mm. Yeah? Take what? You, you, I want you to go to the depot. You tell me. Mm. You tell me even if I'm going to pay for it. Mm. I want you to go any city of wood, mm. take, a, take a sample, mm. and when you go, mm. tell them, mm. I want to do aspect mm. for silica. 
But what's even more perturbing is Joe Karaoke's description of what his companies have offered in the market for almost two years. Mm. Those are the diatoms. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Those are the diatoms. Mm. And that's why we say we mm. buy from different places. First, Karaoke denies that his product is a fertilizer and instead insists it's a soil booster. This is despite the clear labeling on the product's packaging as well as listing by the Kenya Bureau of Standards. So you can see here, this is Kebs already. I'm gonna talk about my product. I'm not gonna differentiate something else which I don't have. I'm gonna talk about GPC soil booster. The best place to take it is Kebs and check the percentage of silica in that fertilizer. But the good thing, you have a 3% of nitrogen on that. So that's the difference. When you're talking about lime and all that, it doesn't have that. The only thing is stabilize the acidity. But this one does more than a lime. If somebody comes and says that uh, we have a deficiency of, of uh, uh, silicon in our soil, which is not actually, it's a, it's a plant nutrient, but it's not even within the trace elements. It's just there. Uh, then, I'm sure not each and every area that uh, has the deficiency. And then this fertilizer should be uh, designed for that particular region, but not a blanket application. In addition, while purchasing the product at different stores, it was not made clear to us by neither officials from NCPB nor GPC about whether we were buying a fertilizer or a soil booster, also known as a soil enhancer. You see, the soil, the plants keep on using the what? Keeps on using the nutrients in the soil. And at a point, they are depleted. So fertilizers actually are to boost the availability or to increase the availability. When you talk of an enhancer, soil enhancer, it's like you, you, you want also to say it's an amendment, but maybe you want to improve the structure of the soil in terms of maybe texture, bulk density, that is the compactability of the soil, okay, to improve on the soil structure so that maybe it is more loose and the air spaces are more, okay, so it can be able to absorb a lot of water and retain it. These holes were left by the decomposing uh, organic matter. And then it becomes very rich in terms of aeration. This begs the question whether or not the farmer should have been notified of the exact nature of this product at the point of purchase. Interestingly, Karaoke heaps the blame on his staff. I, 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 you know, I don't want, you know, I want to be truthful on this. Usually on any company, sometimes you have those kind of gaps. Because these people I get, I'm trying to create employment. You know, I've already created employment more than 100 youth countrywide. These youth, sometimes they come for training we get them for training. But there's a different way of someone understanding. Maybe we'll think these people have understood whatever we have shown them, and later on, they're not gonna do the right thing. So usually, I'm trying to control all those kind of things. And we are trying to recruit other agencies to help us on this. In its response, NCPB claims, and I quote, the owners of developing standards for a fertilizer to ensure there is no market confusion lies with the Fertilizer and Soil Amendments Committee of the Kenya Bureau of Standards, which comprises of representatives from the fertilizer industry, Ministry of Agriculture, Kenya Agriculture and Livestock Research Organization, CALRO, Kenya Plant Health Inspectorate Services, KEFIS, and the Government Chemist, end of quotes. However, Section 2B of the Fertilizers and Foodstuffs Act defines fertilizer as, and I quote, any substance or mixture of substances which is intended or offered for improving or maintaining the growth of plants or the productivity of soil, but does not include manure, compost, wood ash, gypsum, or refuse when sold in its original condition and under the same name, nor does it include organic fertilizers other than lime. End of quote. Before a new product is taken to the market for people to buy, uh, some piloting has to be done so that maybe farmers can see that 
this this product is the best or is worse was that done before it was taken to to the farmers to buy another one what were cabs did they really check on the fertilizer before the fertilizer before the farmers could get meanwhile there is a third twist to this saga and this is about the source and manufacture of the fertilizer actually as a manufacturer we don't use a manufacturer you know like uh, whatever people they think we do formulation but we are a manufacturing company and most of these things you know uh, we get them like now we import some of the um, materials from Netherlands and others we buy from different people and we formulate and that's what we do a lot of formulation we do in three places we do it in our farm we do it here in Maria Kani. yeah Karaoke's statement is a glaring contradiction of what was captured in our undercover filming and whistleblower's account where bags of earth scooped from a pit at African Diatomite Industries Limited were sealed and delivered directly to NCPB stores. How does the ADIL come into partnership? Are they, uh, what they do, uh, uh, we used to, and sometimes we do, buy material from them. Others we buy from uh, Ben Soil, which uh, you know I can provide the information. Already we ship throughout the year the material which we get. So it's the, there's no partnership there. We reached out to Joshua Kulei, the director of African Diatomite Industries Limited, about the alleged partnership with 51 Capital and its CEO, Joe Karioki. Which one is We have never had this person. We don't deal with any bad lies at all. No, no, that's why we are calling. In two emails sent by the company's general manager, Mr. Philemon, and a follow-up phone call, ADIL denies any involvement with the fertilizer subsidy program or in the manufacture of GPC as a fertilizer. No, what we're producing right now is mm. what we're currently producing is 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 uh, is is can seal filter aids. So the byproduct from mm -hmm. for, from the filtration products is, is not there. What we are talking about. Okay. So the same product is not a fertilizer. Underline that. We are, we really added is not responsible uh, for the aftermarkets. Okay. And distributions of these products because they're not in our plan and this is, they are also licensed by, by the government to do that but not that as a, not as a fertilizer the company also denies any business partnership with gpc and ncpb mm. i don't see why adding name should really appear mm -hmm. uh, as being an accomplice to this uh, kind of mess we sell to many companies and and the fact that your gpc has 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 gone ahead and do some innovation on our product, on our raw materials to make fertilizer. We should not really be liable to that. I'm not involved and I have never been involved in any government tendering. Never. I have never been involved in subsidy. I sell it myself. So it's my decision to make sure the farmers are getting the right thing. And that's what I'm saying. If they need to complain, they come to us. We are ready to sort it out. Yeah, it's not like you know, someone is dead. You know, if there is compensation, if something have happened, or any person in my company is responsible for giving out different information, we sort it out. Another document provided by Karaoke during the interview indicates receipt of 23,160 metric tons of organic fertilizer raw materials on 10th May 2023 by SBL Innovate manufacturers from a Dutch company called The Money Investments. A look through Aleph, a data platform created by the Organized Crime and Corruption Reporting Project OCCRP, reveals the company, registered in August 2019, has projects in Africa and is the ultimate beneficial owner of two other Dutch companies, Africa Aviation Center and AgriFoca. Its website suggests the latter, AgriFoca, deals in the production of cocoa and Alan Blackia seed oil in Tanzania and the Democratic Republic of Congo. But according to Aleph, there is no indication that the money investments has a business relationship with Kenya. The same applies to a company by the name Benefat BV, listed as the exporter on this conformity certificate from the Kenya Bureau of Standards, issued on the 28th of March 2023, which also has no business partners in Kenya. On the customs segment of this shipping document, 
NCPB is named as the declarant or representative, which implies that the parastatal was responsible for ensuring the compliance of the consignment, including payment of taxes on behalf of the importer. The document also shows that all taxes charged on this consignment were zero rated. According to a source from the Kenya Revenue Authority KRA, under a normal procedure, one could apply to the National Treasury for such exemptions. Once granted, this will be used to import and allow for exemption of duties. While at this point we've not been able to sufficiently prove that GPC is being sold under the Government Fertilizer Subsidy Program, this document raises a question about the actual relationship between NCPB and Joe Karaoke. Did he apply for the tax exemption or did NCPB? And if NCPB, why then would it undertake this role for a client whose deal it says is under an agency contract? Or could this mean that portions of the product are genuine, but its producer is flooding the market with a fake one? You know, it feels like I'm in court of law. Because the funny thing is, I'm not, it's how I feel. You know how I feel. It's like a one-sided story. During our interview, Karaoke remained evasive when asked about how many bags of his product have been sold but in two phone conversations with our producers, he hinted about the gains he has made from the business. Already since to me was around 800,000 bags. Now more than like 3,000 farmers. A simple calculation based on this figure shows the product could have earned him at least 1.36 billion shillings. After receiving the first consignment, of the national government subsidized DAP fertilizer is of the fertilizer subsidy program at facilitating distribution of subsidized fertilizer controversy still shrouds the government's ambitious fertilizer subsidy program an audit report released in December 2023 by the auditor general Nancy Gadungu raises questions on the success of the program and whether or not it benefited farmers across the country one of the challenges listed as a hindrance to the successful implementation of the fertilizer subsidy program is complaints by farmers interviewed during the audit about not getting the right type of fertilizer during the planting season. Others were variances in the registered acreage vis-a-vis -vis the quantity of fertilizer allocated in the ERP mezzanine system used for distribution of fertilizer. Some farmers did not receive e-vouchers despite being registered in the system and lack of a monitoring and evaluation mechanism for the program also made it difficult to ascertain its success. The main suspect in the subsidized fertilizer fraud will remain incarcerated at the industrial area remand prison till the 15th of this month pending a bail bond determination. Meanwhile, the National Cereals and Produce Board has been busy with this case where Benjamin Kuto is accused of defrauding it of 400 bags of subsidized fertilizer and another where Robert Keeping a Teach Bet is accused of stealing the product in Narok County. Led officers to the Grace Covenant Church where officers nabbed 252 50 kg bags of government subsidized fertilizer. But these operations conceal the fraud of fake affordable organic fertilizer awaiting the lapse of its two-year partnership with 51 Capital and African Diatomite Industries Limited at the expense of unsuspecting farmers. In addition, 51 Capital CEO Joe Karaoke now wears another cap as that of GPC company continues to change, exploring new product lines. Sasa hivi tuko na initiative inaitwa SOC ambalo tunalipa wakulima juu ya carbon credit ya mchanga. Watu wengi maybe Kenya tumekuwa tukiangalia wakulima, I understand 
President William Ruto has maintained that his administration will not reintroduce subsidies on petroleum products and maize flour as demanded by Azimio leader Raila Odinga. According to the president, the subsidies were economically untenable and had been abused by his predecessor Uhuru Kenyatta to benefit a few well-connected business operatives. The William Ruto government has in the financial year 2023-2024 allocated 4.5 billion shillings for a similar program. However, with a skeptical report and a fake product like the GPC fertilizer already circulating the market, one wonders who the fertilizer subsidy program truly seeks to benefit. When offering a, a certain fertilizer for subsidy, I'm sure there was a process that was done in terms of certification, uh, verification of the nutrients, and then it was accepted probably as a local produced fertilizer and because it's cheaper. But now, the person who presented that did not adhere to his integrity. So this is an integrity issue. Take, for example, uh, a farmer who uses wrong fertilizer. You, you, you lose the whole year because you only have one chance to plant and harvest. In its email to Africa Uncensored, NCPB reiterated that the Ministry of Agriculture is the main government entity involved in the subsidy program. However, efforts to search for contracts awarded to suppliers of fertilizer under the subsidy on the Public Procurement Regulatory Authority website and the Public Procurement Information Portal still proved futile and a request to the Ministry for a response to the allegations in this video by the time of publication went unanswered. We also received no response from the Kenya Bureau of Standards and Thamani Investments and Benefit BV, the two Dutch companies which allegedly supplied organic fertilizer raw materials to SBL Innovate manufacturers. Hi, my name is Cynthia Gishiri. I'm a reporter and producer at Africa Uncensored. Thank you for watching this video to this point. You are our number one supporter and we value you. To maintain our independence and be able to bring you more in-depth and balanced pieces, we are asking for your financial support. You can do this by becoming a member on our channel or our patron on Patreon now and support our work. The link is on the screen or in the video description given below. You can also send us your support via M-Pesa directly, either on the screen or below. Thank you.